hey, my name's Jasmine, but I'm actually energy. Everything I think, see, feel, say, do, and sense is a dance of energy, vibrating at varying rates of frequency. Our world is a dynamic and ever-evolving environment made up of a swirling mass of energy. The first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but it can be converted into different forms. So it manifests as the breathtaking tapestry of life that we see around us. Now let's turn our attention inwards for a second. Holistically speaking, energy manifests as the physical body and it also manifests as the spirit that gives life to the physical body. Energy also manifests in the mind as our thoughts and it also manifests as the intuition, otherwise known as the non-physical mind. We see energy manifest as feelings and emotions or energy in motion. Dense energy is stored within the body as pain or trauma. We can also see it in sensory perception involving the processing of energetic information by the mind. Furthermore, we observe energy expressing itself as masculine and feminine within. We see it in the energy centers of the body, otherwise known as chakras. And it is believed that a blocked chakra can impede the proper flow of life force energy throughout the body. Additionally, we can actually sense the energy of people around us and the things around us. And we can also outwardly direct energy using attention and intention. The list just goes on and on. But you see, the thing is, is that once we actually have eyes to see the magnificent world of energy, then we can begin to actually live a more conscious lifetime. Take fear, for instance. It's not the spider that actually scares me. I've realized that I'm actually afraid of the physical sensation of fear within my body. It's not the creepy crawly itself, it's the energy it stirs up in me. This shift in perspective has made facing fear and any emotion for that matter more manageable. It's given me the courage to just really sit there and be with the emotion as it arises and to actually observe it and feel it fully, realizing that it is just energy. By acknowledging that energy is always in motion, then we can actually learn to trust that this inner sensation is temporary and that it will pass. This really empowers us to actually find a comfort within the discomfort. It allows us to cultivate this acceptance, which is very freeing. It really allows us to be present with the emotional energy. And this is the attitude that actually allows us to heal the emotional body, to heal the past pain that we are carrying around. Similarly, with thoughts, we can see that those all-consuming stories of the mind aren't based in reality, they're based in energetic frequency. These little forms that suddenly appear in the headspace that we call thoughts are actually little energy formations. Suddenly they lose their hold on us and we can see them more objectively. This realization fosters a sense of freedom from the clutches of the mind. Other ways of consciously working with energy include finding your unique perfect balance of feminine and masculine energy within. And we may also connect to the inner energy field of the body and use it as an anchor to stay connected to the present moment. We may also work to unblock energy centers and even engage in practices like qigong or yoga where we may gain the ability to harness and direct our energetic flow. Moreover, being mindful of where we choose to direct our attention in any given moment is akin to wielding an energetic torch. This awareness allows us to navigate our experiences with intention, understanding that our focus is a powerful force that shapes our reality. 
So when we embrace the information just expressed and when we embrace the practices, then we can actually open up paths to a more liberated and masterful and conscious human experience. Now, as mentioned before, energy vibrates at varying frequencies and our physical form as a whole actually holds its own unique vibrational frequency. The soup of energy that is labelled jasmine vibrates at a frequency that allows for manifestation in the physical world. This, relatively speaking, is quite a slow frequency of vibration. However, if we were to speed up my vibration, perhaps to that of the spirit realm that holds a rapid vibrational frequency, then you would see me vanish right before your eyes. This is similar to the high frequency of wing beats made by a honeybee, which is often beyond the threshold of human visual perception. You're simply not tuned into my frequency anymore. <laughs> Perhaps this makes you wonder what may be around you in the unseen realms of existence right now. Worlds existing within worlds. Nevertheless, we are all walking around with a distinct vibrational frequency in any given moment. And this highly affects the way that we interact with the world. Why is this? Well, creation appears to be subject to the principle of correspondence, meaning everything is a reflection. All is divinely and perfectly symmetrical in ways that the human mind simply cannot even begin to conceive. And therefore, in the world of vibration, like attracts like simply because it is a reflection of it. Knowing this, we can realise deeper truths in the moment of experience. For example, say we wake up in a high vibration, we are then going to be a vibrational match to positive thoughts, positive thinking, that and each thought is a vibrational match to another, another positive thought and another and another, and we feel really good as a result, obviously. Um, we feel like the, the world is just very colourful and our body feels light, like skipping around and we're also gravitating towards similar positive frequencies in the outer world so our outer experience it just kind of goes according to plan everything goes really well and then on the flip side we wake up and we're in a low vibration we're obviously going to be a match to fear-based negative thinking and then that just sort of creates a domino effect in the mind more negative thoughts attracting more negative thoughts and then we're, all, we're gonna probably observe our past pain at the surface all of this energetic past pain at the surface which is probably why we're in that low vibration in the first place um everything just kind of all our insecurities are highlighted the outer world is gray and gloomy and obviously things are just not going to go according to plan. We're going to attract um, unfortunate experiences. So here we observe this link between the inner world and the outer world and how the inner world is continuously creating our experience. So how can we use this information to consciously work with energy? Well, firstly, it heightens our levels of awareness in any given moment. We may observe how we attract the same negative experiences over and over in our lifetime, and then we can choose to take action and delve into introspection and self-healing. Outer world presents us with clues as to what we are unable to see hiding in the inner world. Secondly, if I'm aware that my vibrational frequency is creating my experience of the world in any moment, then I can actually see the thoughts that the mind is generating and I can see that I'm only seeing and experiencing these thoughts because of the vibration that my energetic form currently holds. So again, it's like, oh, I'm in a bad mood oh, I'm attracting negative thoughts. We take the attention away from the thoughts and the stories of the mind. We take our attention away from that and we actually 
lose interest in what the thoughts are saying and we see them more objectively. The thoughts lose their grip on us. We also get less lost in reaction when things don't go our way throughout the day. Instead, we simply watch and observe the play of energy. This brings a level of acceptance and flow, and it can even be a little humorous to watch. In our detached aerial perspective, we are somewhat liberated. We are not as blind to the intricate workings of the universe. Moreover, again, realizing that the inner world creates the outer world experience, we can see that the inner world is the realm of cause and the outer world the realm of effect. This absolutely highlights the importance of the inner world. So we can take our attention away, we can take our interest away from all the happenings in the outer world and actually turn our attention inwards where we may alchemize the inner world. So really nurturing a healthy mind space, nurturing a healthy body, releasing past pain, finding space in the mind and the body. Now, you may be wondering why our inner world has such an enormous impact on our outer world. Well, yes, everything is a reflection, but also remember, everything is energy. One great, immense, infinite field of energy. And since it's all energy, it's all interconnected as one. This is unity consciousness. It is what we may call God, or whatever term you prefer. So the abundant manifestations of energy around us is God expressing itself. In the human form, we are both the drop in the ocean and the ocean itself. And so we realise yet another layer of truth. I'm Jasmine, I'm energy, I'm having an experience of individuality, and I am one with God. I am. Now, because everything is energy, that means that everything is everything, and it is all linked. So, it all communicates with itself, basically. This is why we have things like synchronicity unfold in our life. This is why we have things like the mind-body connection. It is also why you can sit in a room and really sense the energy of the other people in the room. It is why you can sense what they are thinking um, and feel their pain and even transmute their pain. This sense of connection to all that is may be amplified by resting with the beauty of nature. And it may also be deeply realized through quieting the mind and opening the heart. In doing so, we go beyond simply conceptualizing unity consciousness, but actually experiencing others as ourself. If we're able to see a person as more than their thoughts, their pain, their actions, their conditioning, we're able to see beyond that into what they are, which is energy consciousness. Um, same as what we all are, we are all made of the same stuff then we're actually, we're able to really kind of see beyond the illusion of separation. We see beyond that ego that separates us from one another. And in doing so, this, this kind of, this sense of interconnectedness that arises, maybe sometimes gradually over a period of time, it really it flourishes this compassion within us. And in my opinion, I feel like this is what the world needs more than anything right now. The magnificence of the energetic reality is just incomprehensible, really. However, with the information expressed in this video, we can certainly begin to recognize that there is a harmonious dance of energy taking place. And we may therefore find some level of peace over time through working with energy and raising our awareness. I know that I certainly have. Um, and a lot of that has also come just through releasing and surrendering all attachments and expectations to this mystical unfolding of life. So thank you so much for watching this video. My name's Jasmine. 
Um, I just want to say a big hello to all of the new subscribers. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and I really hope that this content can provide you with some guidance or inspiration along your journey. Um, and yeah, if you're new here, um, please subscribe as well and please like the video if it was useful. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye 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 bye! Oh.